it, you know, it's like anything else, the only consideration that you have to take into play with the 1911 is when do you actually disengage the actual mechanical safety on that right. government model. 10 millimeter, just because. they don't make a 9 millimeter. That's right. You know, the other thing is guys talk about, well, it's got a mechanical safety, you'll forget about it, you know, under stress. I'm like, no, you won't. Why would you forget about it if you train with it? I don't want to disengage the safety as I'm coming out of the holster. I've actually seen someone shot who, did, who was doing that because they got just a little too much stuff going on in the hand. All right. So we're here with the guy. We're kind of doing the whole, hey, no problem, whatever it is you want. I'm going for the wallet. It starts slow. No matter what, the safety comes off only when I clear pop. If that makes sense. Hello internet people, Jeff Blubman with Practically Tactical and in this video I'm here once again with Steve Fisher of Sentinel Concepts yeah. and we're going to be talking about concealed carry considerations with the 1911. Okay, so we got some old school meets new school meets varying different uh, time periods of drawing. It, it, it's a gun. It, you know, it's like anything else. The only consideration that you have to take into play with the 1911 is when do you actually disengage the actual mechanical safety on that gun. Right. So generally speaking, for years we were taught to bring the gun up, present the gun, align the sights, finger on trigger, depress safety, depress trigger. That was way back old school stuff that was taught a million years ago. Um, for myself personally, the safety comes off once I clear body. So depending on how I'm wearing a gun, my 1911s is either from appendix or kind of strong side or just back to about the 5 o'clock reach, you know, 4.30ish. So it just depends on the gun, the mode I'm carrying that day, and how I want it. But no matter what, the safety comes off only when I clear the bottom. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't want to disengage the safety as I'm coming out of the holster. I've actually seen someone shot who, did, who was doing that because they got just a little too much stuff going on in the hand. I want to keep my, I'll actually ride my thumb underneath the safety until I come to, a, like if I'm drawing from behind the hip uh, position, until I come to a count two where the gun is more or less at a 45 degree angle, that's when I'll break the safety off. Just because I'm ingraining that if somebody's in an entangled type thing and I need to work them over. Um, or, you know, if I'm coming from appendix and once my gun hits that, that horizontal line, that horizontal plane, that's not break it off. But I want to break it off before I start pressing the trigger. This is a common argument, you know, that we hear, uh, which is, well, is defeating the safety, the mechanical safety, part of the shooting process. I don't personally believe so. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that either. You know, the other thing is guys talk about, well, it's got a mechanical safety, you'll forget about it, you know, under stress. I'm like, no, you won't. Why would you forget about it if you train with it? You know, even, even my draw stroke, my presentation, when I go from this to a Glock, to a CZ, to whatever it is I'm carrying, it's still the same when I, when I apply this hand, my, my dominant hand to the gun, right. and I roll those thumbs forward, guess what, idiots? It's deactivating the safety on the gun, regardless if the gun has a safety or not. Mm. It's the same motion, same repetition. Everything is still part of the same in my draw stroke. It does not change. Yeah. So I don't know where that internet BS comes from. It's probably because most of the guys have never lived with a 1911 or actually used it because they're in a polymer world, which is nothing wrong with. So we'll run some drills. I'm actually running my... Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the gun because oh, everyone's going to ask and it's so, so cool. Uh, Dave Laubert at Defensive Creations, good buddy of mine. I got a Colt Delta Elite 10 millimeter government model 10 millimeter just because they don't make a nine millimeter that's right because this is bigger by one millimeter so had dave redo this entire gun for me it came out absolutely awesome it's gorgeous and i'm gonna ring it out cool uh maybe we'll first start with the traditional draw of however you'd be drawing from behind the hip sure. and then we'll go to some uh, some count dracula stuff yeah, we can do whatever other stuff like that yeah. and you can see the presentation uh, and see steve shoot this here beast of a gun my 10 millimeter wonder <clears throat> blaster Okay, so when you're ready, uh, defeat that cover garment and get some rounds on the threat high center chest. All right. Scans for additional threats. Where is cover? Where is concealment? Where is avenue of escape? Does a tactical reload with retention. So we did another dedicated video about uh, different reloads and stuff, but I mean, how many reloads are you going to carry on you typically? 
wanted a backup gun generally. Yeah, so retaining that mag is probably a good idea. When you pull it out, you're going to see there's brass or not. Yeah, so. exactly. Cool. And in right. most cases, if, if I'm dealing with one or two offenders, depending on what the case may be, obviously situations that yeah. once the guns come out and they start going to gunplay, we know it's actually that a lot of dudes will scatter. So you'll get the first guy, you'll solve that first problem, secondary assessment, top the gun back off if need be, or, hey, that was cool, and all the bad guys went away, get on the phone. Yeah. Personal choice on how you deal with it. Question, uh, mm -hmm. as far as when you're carrying this 10, what's your preferred uh, load? Uh, right now, it's the Corbon 155 DPX load. That's a really good choice. Uh, my secondary to that is some custom loaded ammunition. It's a uh, 165 grain gold dot doing about 1450. That's feet per second, folks. Yeah, it, it's a screamer. It, it's this stuff here. This is this is pretty hot. It's screaming. The gun's moving quick. I like it. It's flat. It's awesome. Okay. Just because I can have one. That's all. <laughs> I actually really want one. We were firing that gun at 110 yards, and it's like a freaking laser beam. It it's I mean, just it's awesome. The flattest trajectory that I've seen in a, in a pistol. Yeah, honestly. outside of a 9x23, there's not much, you know, better than this. So uh, let's do the Count Dracula oh. now that you're wearing that, uh, that uh, unbuttoned or unzipped Count Dracula jaw stroke. So just to bring a few things to light of this, this is more of a diversion deflection kind of thing. So it's, okay, the typical that we were always taught was, hey, my wallet. I'm reaching back for the wallet. At this point, this pull clears the cover garment draws attention. I've seen it on video, myself on video doing it. I go, oh, that was kind of weird. I just looked for where this hand was going. And that allows this garment to be ripped back out of the way to allow me to get my hand up to the gun quickly without pseudo telegraphing the big sweeping motion of the cover garment. Cool. So that demo came, it for us? Yeah, that actually came from an old Chicago narcotics copper dude. And it just has kind of been around for a while. Very few people have seen it, but it's been out there. All right. So we're here with the guy, we're kind of doing the whole, hey, no problem, whatever it is you want. I'm going for the wallet, it starts slow. Nothing in it, mag. I noticed that uh, he scans for additional threats quickly and then gets back to the original threat, okay? He knows that that person is or was a threat, so always come back to threat. When people hit the ground, there is a tendency that blood they regain that blood pressure a little bit so they can kind of reanimate, and next thing you know, you need to shoot the guy because he's raising his gun again. Oh. Yeah, just because there may be additional problems, this problem is still what tried to hurt us initially. All right, so here's what it looks like. Also, you'll notice what <clears throat> Steve is doing is he's got his hands and hands. hands. I don't know where that came from. I think I was uh, talking like sound dog for a second. In that high compressed ready or that fence position. So he's just kind of talking Italian. He's got his hands up high. He's kind of dealing with this managing this unknown contact to use some of Craig's verbiage. Yep. But he can still, you know, default go into a cover, go into a, a default position or strike from there. So it's exactly. a very um, kind of uh, non-aggressive type posture. It's not a, I'm giving up surrendering right. position. Right, it's not this because you but can it's take a one right the face. It's, it's a management position. Yeah, so I'm kind of keeping my hands in, in movement, in motion. So just kind of a little point on that. Whole nother video. <laughs> yeah, whole nother program. Go see Craig Douglas, South Narc. Best program you'll ever have for a combative's role in use of carrying a gun and defending yourself, honestly. Outstanding, yeah. So yeah, this is just one option. So, you know, what I usually use it when I'm wearing looser cover garments, outer jackets. You know, and it's also just a good thing to have in case of that typical give me your wallet kind of whatever you know action that may happen and it's like sure no problem this hand is still in a, in a position of defense mm -hmm. i can simply grab sweep to the pistol draw the gun aggressively get on the sights and get on the gun awesome any other things that you wanted to talk about in this video as far as different drawing tactics i think it's kind of cool to show something that is uh, yeah. often or not so often talked about sure. which is uh, what, what do you call it? Because I always called it like the Count Dracula. Guys have always called it the Count Dracula draw. Uh, Dave Spaulding, another prominent trainer, buddy of mine, his guys have a tendency when they do it, is they bring it up higher. Mm -hmm. More of that cape sweep, and it brings that arm up and out and away. Uh, you know, it's just a personal take on how you were taught it. I was taught just grab it here at the base, pull it, draw, and as you notice, the pistol comes up to about the two, mm -hmm. and then if I need to de deactivate the safety and engage, or I just continue on with my presentation, 
at that point. So it, it's all personal preference and how you're actually setting it up. For me, either way, depends on the garment. I just want to grab this thing, get a good tight purchase on the bottom of the jacket or the in. shirt, yeah. rip it up in a way so it clears here and allows me to get that hand on the gun and present the gun, catching the gun, and then engaging. You just go and check them out at AlliancePoliceTraining.com. Uh, uh, they're letting us shoot here. This has kind of become our home base, home away from home. Yeah. Special thanks to Steve Fisher of Sentinel Concepts. Go check out his entire training schedule. Awesome dude, awesome instructor. Really pleased to have him. And if you're in the market for some ammo, which of course you are because you are a shooter and you are training, go to GreatLakesAmmo.com and use promo code PRACTAC10 to get 10% off your ammo. If you like this video, go ahead and go and like it and subscribe to it. If you think that other people would benefit from this information, go ahead and share it with the world. I'm Jeff Blubin with Practically Tactical. Thanks for watching.